The worksheet we're doing today is called what? What do you know? What do you think? That's a good guess. Where else could you look? Oh yeah, it is. It's parent functions, isn't it? And how did you know that, Wes? Oh, it says it on the board. Excellent. Okay. We talk about parent functions a lot during the year. I need to make something very clear. There are not mother functions. Okay. That's way too close to something else. We don't want to say that because we might be misunderstood. Okay. Parent functions. It is the function that all the other functions in that family come from, though. Okay. So it's called a parent function. Okay. Have you ever seen this function before? Now, sometimes you saw it as y equals x, right? Okay, so are those, are those different? Are they the same? So for algebra 2, they're the same. If you're talking about graduate level math, they're, they're different. They're not the same. But we don't really need to worry about that right now, right? Because we're in algebra 2. We're not in gra graduate level. Fair? Okay, so if you've seen this before, can you tell me what shape it makes when you graph it? Can you show me with your arms? Okay, let's check and see what happens. Okay, first of all, let's give it a name. Okay, do you know what kind of a function this is? It's a linear function. If it's a linear function, what shape does it make when you graph it? A line. Okay, so we're going to jump over here to the table and the graph first. Okay, and I say if x is 0, what is y? Well, if y equals x and x is 0, what is y? 0. If x is 1, what is y? 1. If x is 2, what is y? 2. two. What about if x is negative 1? Negative 1. If x is negative 2? Negative 2. Okay. <clears throat> so are those points pretty easy to plot on the graph? Okay, let's do it. How many points does it actually take to make a line? Two, right? It takes two points to make a line. So why am I making all of these? Just because I'm some sort of weirdo? Well, I am, but the point is, how easy is it to see the line when I made all the points that I could? Super easy, right? Okay. Now, I have a trick question. Are you ready for a trick question? Can I connect them? No. 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 Yeah. Well, the answer is either yes or no, so some of you are right, okay? How do I know I can connect them, or how do I know I can't connect them? What you got? So let me ask this question first. On every graph that we ever do, can we always connect the points? No. Okay? So we have to know when it's okay and when it's not okay. All right? So think about this. What about this point right here in between the two dots that I made? What if it's like if x is one half? Is y one half? Does that make sense for this equation? Then can I connect them? Yes. When all the points in the middle make sense, I can connect them. And because I know, and you will soon, that that's actually a definition of something, I know if it's continuous or discrete. Why? All the values in, in between make sense, so I can connect them, which means it's a continuous function. Okay? Yes, ma'am. We will. Is that fair? Yes. Okay, thank you. So let's let's jump right back down here. Okay? Where is the x intercept of this function? If this is the x axis right here, where does it cross the x axis? Zero. So zero, zero. Because it crosses at a point, right? Okay. Well if this is the y axis, where does it cross the y axis? Wait, it's the same? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's fine. I need you to be um, aware of something that I do as a teacher, okay? Kind of just did it right now. Not exactly, but kind of. Because I said, it's the same? If I say it like that, does that, does that seem like it's right? 
No, it doesn't, right? Okay. There's a lot of times that you're going to answer. I'm going to ask a question. You're going to answer, and I'm going to say, are you sure? You're either wrong or you're right, and I need you to be sure. But you're not going to know. Okay. Don't automatically assume that because I say, are you sure, that means you're wrong. Because it's not always true. Okay? Because sometimes I just need you to be sure. Okay? All right, jump up here to domain and range. You guys have heard these words before, yes? yes. What does domain have to do with? The X values. These are the X values. What does range have to do with? the y values okay so if we're talking about domain we're talking about left and right what are we talking about if we're talking about range okay so can I argue with you for a second if we talk about domain and we're talking about left to right we say left first because that's to the negative direction right and then to the positive direction by saying right so what are we talking about if we're talking about range down to up that's a weird way to say it it's not how we're used to saying it right but that's how we're going to say it, okay? So for the domain, we look at this function and we say to ourselves, how far does it go to the left? Infinity. So all the way, right? How far does it go to the right? All the way. So how would you, what would you say for the domain? You could say infinite. Continuous. It is continuous, but that's really not something we say with, with domain. Have you seen this symbol before? What does it mean? I'm only going to let you use it if you know what it means. If not, we'll have to write all the words. Somebody said it just a second ago. All real numbers. Okay. Was that you, Charlie? Good job. This means all real numbers. Okay. That means any X value that we choose, it's part of this graph. Okay. But in Algebra 2, we also have to be able to write our domain in interval notation. So can I show you what that looks like? Yes. It looks like this. Negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, I need to make something clear to you. Is there such thing as negative infinity? No. There's not. Okay, so why in the world did I just write negative infinity then? To make it more. It's exactly right. It's a notation. It's a notation for us to know we are talking about to the left. Specifically, we're saying to the left. It goes all the way to the left and then all the way to the right. Infinity is just infinity. This is a notation to help us. Okay? All right, what about range? What if we're talking about down to up? How far down does it go? All the way and how far up does it go all the way so what's the what's the range all real numbers or negative infinity to positive, positive infinity yeah because it's down to up right yes. okay for the record we're gonna skip this box right now okay on on the whole worksheet we're gonna come back to it later when we get there but right now we're gonna skip it on the whole worksheet okay maximum and minimum what's the highest point on this graph well, what do you mean? I have one right up there. Oh, all real numbers. Oh, because it keeps going, right? So, let me ask it again. What's the highest point on the graph? All real numbers. There. Say it one more time. There isn't one. It does go to infinity. I agree with what you're saying. But if I'm asking you what's the highest point, there's not one. Because it keeps on going. Okay? What about the minimum? None. None. There's not one. Intervals of increase and intervals of decrease. That means where is it increasing and where is it decreasing? Now, I want to make a little notation on my worksheet. Um, you might want to make the same notation. When we're talking about intervals of increase and decrease, we're specifically talking about the domain. So we're specifically talking about left to right. We start on the left and go to the right. Okay? So if I start on the left and go to the right, where is it increasing? Everywhere, right? So it's increasing everywhere. Where is it decreasing? 
If it's increasing everywhere, where is it decreasing? Nowhere. Never! In behavior, this is definitely a new thing for Algebra 2, okay? So here's what it says. As x, so as the x values are going to the left, right? We know that now because it says negative infinity, so we know we're talking about to the left, correct? As the x values are going to the left, what is happening to the y values? They're going down, so how are we going to write that? Absolutely. As the x values are going to the right, as the x values are increasing exponentially, what's happening to the y values? It's going, it's going up, so what are we going to write? Positive. Yeah, we don't have to write positive infinity, we can just write infinity. Does that make sense? Okay, knowing that we get out of this class in 13 minutes, but I need to take two minutes to clean before then. Okay, so we have 11 minutes, right? We have one, two, or three to do. I'll do as many as we can until it's time to go. Which one would you like to, me to do first? Three. To this one? Two? Okay, so we're going to keep on going on the same page then, right? But what do you need to have done when you get back to class tomorrow? To one, two, three, four. Got it? Okay. Have you ever seen this before? What's it called? Absolute value. That means that any number that I put in, what do I get out? Same. Always a positive. Okay. So what do you want to do first? So you want to use the table and graph it first? A lot of visual people do, and that's totally fine. Some people like to go here, 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 because I want to do it like in a like a logical manner, but a lot of visual people want to see the graph first because they can do the domain and all this other stuff if they can see what it looks like. Is that fair? Okay, so let's start with zero. If x is zero, what is y? Zero. zero. What do you want to try next? Negative, negative what? One. Why do you want to choose negative one next? No, I mean, why do you want to choose that one next? It's, just, it's, just it's, it's next, right? What if I chose negative five next? Is that okay? What if I put negative 5 right here? Is that okay? No. So it depends, okay? If I want you to make a typical mathematical table, it's not okay. Because typically we go from negative to positive on our x values. But if, it, if I don't give you any directions, I don't care how you put your table as long as you get, it, get your graph right. Is that fair? Okay? So if I put negative 5 as x, what's y? 5, because if I put in a negative 5 in absolute value, I get out a positive 5. Do you, what do you want to choose here for x? Negative 10. Why would you choose that one? Because you want to keep your distances the same. Okay, that's fair. So what about for y? What do you have? 10. So what do you want to choose for x's then? 5 and 5 and 5. Okay, and then 10 and 10. All right, so let's plot those on the graph real quick. Negative 10, positive 10. Negative 5, positive 5, 0, 0. 5, 5. 10, 10. What if Jennifer didn't decided she did not want 5 and 5? She wanted 4 and 4. Is that okay? Is it okay that she has a different table than me? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Right? How many points can go on this table? We can only write 5, but how many can live here on this function? Actually, an infinite amount, right? Okay. So, can I connect these? Uh, yes. How do you know? Okay. Which means it's also continuous. What's our x intercept? Zero, zero. What's our y intercept? Zero, zero. What's our domain? How far to the left does it go? All the way, and how far to the right? All the way, so all real? And negative to positive, right? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, what about the range? How far down does it go? 
Uh-oh. It stops at zero, doesn't it? This this uh, vertex of the absolute values at zero, zero, when we're talking about range, we're only talking about the y values, so we're saying it goes to zero. How far up does it go? All the way, right, infinity? So for our range, we have to say y is greater than or equal to zero. For interval notation, we have to say brace or bracket, excuse me, zero to infinity. Now, why are these parentheses and this is a bracket? A bracket implies that it stops there. Why don't I have a bracket on infinity? Do you know where the infinity is, the end of infinity is? Neither do I. So we can't assume that it's included. Does that make sense? So that's why we have a parenthesis there. That's why we have a bracket here because zero is included. Okay. What's the maximum point? None. What's the minimum point? I need you to I need you to listen to what I say and then answer again. Is that fair? What's the minimum point? Zero zero, right? A lot of you said zero. And zero is not a point, right? The lowest point on this graph is the minimum point. So that's zero zero. Does that make sense? Okay. From left to right, where is it increasing? Only over here, right? From here to here, it's rising, it's increasing. So how are we going to say that? Again, we're talking about domain, so. So I'm going to argue with you just a little bit, okay? Can you be increasing or decreasing at a change of direction? No. Can you tell that this is the point where it changes directions? It's decreasing and then it's increasing. So we can't decrease or increase at a point. So we just say it's everything greater than that. Okay. Where is it decreasing? Everything less than that. So X is less than zero. Does that make sense? When I ask you if that makes sense, if it doesn't make sense, I need you to say no. Got it? Okay. Okay, end behavior. As X is increasing, as we're moving to the right, what's happening to the Ys? Uh, it's, increasing. it's increasing as well. Okay, so where, what do we write here? Uh, infinity. infinity. As X is, uh, can I, can I start again? I just said the wrong thing. I just, it's not a wrong answer. I just said the wrong thing. Okay. As X is going to the left. So if we're going this way, as X is going to the left, what's happening to the Y's? Is, but what's happening to the Y's? Because this time we're saying I'm going this direction on purpose, right? If I'm going to the left, the Y's are increasing and they're going to infinity. They're going positive, right? They're going in the positive direction. Does that make sense? As X is going to the right, what's happening to the Y's? Also going in the positive direction, so infinity. Got it? Okay, we have like three minutes. Which one of these do you want me to start on? Top or bottom? Bottom? Oh, you already know what it's called? Yeah. Excellent. We're going to call it a cubic. I know it has a cube in it, but we call it a cubic function. Okay? So we graph it. Zero, zero. Is that right? Because zero cubed is zero. What about if it's one? What's one times one times one? Try it one more time. Okay, one. What about if x is two? What's two times two times two? Eight, two, eight. A uh, negative one, negative one, and negative two, negative eight. Uh, can I connect them? It's not a straight line, it's a curve. But what about the points in between? 
If I have negative a half, could I cube negative a half and get a value? You wouldn't, but that's okay. But could I get a value? Yes. yes. So I can connect them. And I'm not going to judge you if you don't go through all the points, if you don't judge me. Well, I probably won't judge you anyways, but whatever. What's the x-intercept? Zero, zero. What's the y-intercept? Zero, zero. Okay. We also know what else? Continuous. Okay. Domain and range? Why do you think domain is all real numbers? On the x's, right? You can go all the way to the left. Even though I didn't go negative 3, I would go down negative 27, right? Even though I didn't go negative 4, I would go down something really big, right? Okay, so my domain is all real numbers or negative to positive. Now, guys, sometimes people have a hard time with that one honestly, because to them it looks like it's going down and not left. And we're talking about left and right, aren't we? But I need you to realize as we're going down, we are going to the left. As we're going right, I mean, as we're going up, we are going to the right. Does that make sense? Okay. So what about the range? Down to up, negative to and positive, right? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Maximum point? None. Minimum point? None. Where is it increasing and where is it decreasing? From left to right. If we're going left to right, where is it increasing? The confusing part for most people on that is the fact that I have a down arrow right here. So it looks like I'm going this way, right? But I'm talking about if I go from left to right, if I start on the leftmost point and travel to the right, where is it increasing? Everywhere, right? So where is it decreasing? Never. If it's increasing everywhere, it can't be decreasing anywhere. Okay? End behavior. As we're going to the left, what's happening to the Ys? It's going down. So negative infinity. As we're moving to the right, what's happening to the Ys? It's going up, so we're going to positive infinity. Okay? Any questions?